Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Today we're talking about AI in baseball. Get ready, people. Terrified for this episode. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball, presented to you by Seat Geek. This is going to be an all timer. I feel it in my bones. Uh, when when Trevor Plouffe on Monday walks away and says, <laughs> "I've got some thoughts on AI and baseball," and I've been talking to people. Uh, God, if you've ever seen me behind a fireplace or with a beer in my hand, you know there's not a conversation I would sign up for more. Uh, Trev, how are you doing, my good man? Jacob and Beavers and everyone listening, what's up? Uh, yeah, this was going to be an interesting episode, and I think I just want to start off by saying I don't know like most of the stuff. I don't know about a lot of this stuff. I don't know what I just said right there either. I'm just trying to say I'm – talking out loud about AI. I don't understand it fully. Uh, even if you think you understand it fully, I don't think you're right about that. So mm. basically we're just going to, we're going to scratch the surface of this and then kind of give some opinions on it. So be nice in the comments. Also, I got my Bo Bichette shirt on today. Big Homer. And there's a, there's a reason for that. Jake, how are you doing? I'm good, man. Uh, I'm good. We, uh, we also got, you know, some, Trev, we love some young stud stuff that we might close with. Uh, Jackson Holiday getting the call. He's going to be wearing number seven like Pops. That's pretty insane. Uh, Orioles haven't been too much on my radar. Uh, and I don't know. I guess I'm kind of excited for them to be. And maybe that's just because the Yankees are 10 and 2. Whoops. Uh, Rafaela gets the eight year uh, extension with the Bo Sox as they get uh, really tough Trevor Story news on the other side. And then we also, since we talked pitching injuries, Framber, Pavetta, and Josiah Gray. So, like, that story is not over in general. So, uh, it's freaky, dude, is what it is. Well, like, everyone's like, it's not a rash of injuries. These things happen all the time. And then, bam, we just keep getting hit with them. And that's where I, I do, I, I think we circle back around on that because we, we talked to Booney a little more about it since we last talked. Verlander, Cole have talked. Um, and, Trev, I, I think part of the reason you hooked me on this AI is that a, a chunk of the section is talking about injury prevention, and uh, that's where I, again, hey, I, I'll be honest, I have a little old-school Italian man in me that kicks in and is like, oh, AI in baseball, I don't know, man, I don't need that, but, hey, if you... I'll tell you this, computers, if you can figure out the injuries, I'm all in on you. Um, so we'll, we'll get to that. And uh, I do want to tell the people about Shady Rays just because uh, every time there's not an eclipse, you should be wearing Shady Rays. Um, Shady Rays are the best sunnies in the game. Those are my words. And that's not on the sheet, but that's just me being real. I'm wearing my shades right now. I wear them every day. Uh, and I get a lot Thank of love goodness. for them. Yeah. Your outfit is brutal today, but the shades that's crazy. make up for it. That's, Quarter zips are just not it, people. But those crazy. shades, those are it. I can't believe how hellbent you're against quarter zips. Anyways, Shady Rays, independent sunglasses company, five stars by over 300,000 people. Uh, and if you ever lose or break them, they have their loss and broken replacement guarantee. So, you basically have Sunnies for life. And exclu exclusively, eclipsefully, for our listeners, Shady Rays has given out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com, use code TALK, and 50% off two-plus pairs of premium polarized sunglasses. That offer applies to the custom Jimmy and Jake collab shades that I am wearing right now. Go check out their whole website. You know, the Jake Shades are for some people. I do have kind of a sneaky around the office update. There's a new person in the office wearing the Jake Shades. Jack Doyle, <laughs> we got ice. Whoa. Hooked him in. Yeah, a known fashion icon of sorts. Uh, yeah. From his sunglasses to his socks. So uh, give, give Shady Rays a look. S summer's coming. All right? Um, Trev, man... I am full 
Coin toss. Pass the rock. Madden. Pass the rock. I am deferring because <laughs> you said you I'm were open. talking to people. This is very much late night Trev's lane, which I think we need to start tapping into more. Um, so, Cook. Okay. Again, people. I'm just, <laughs> we're just talking out loud about this. We're, we're researching in real time. I'm a high school graduate. Okay, even though I am a Stanford man, <laughs> yeah, I'm a 2004 Crespi Carmelite High School graduate. Even though I did graduate with a 3.8 GPA, only brought down by my bad freshman year when I was a bad boy. Mm. Should have got straight A's. Anyways, I think I want to start with saying these two get lumped together a lot, and I, I think there is a distinct difference between like data analytics and AI learning. Um, and I'm going to give you a definition that I found online. Right, I uh, don't most need glaring... it, but if you could, if you could tell the people, because I'm good. But the most glaring difference between AI and predictive analytics is that AI can be autonomous and learn on its own. Uh, predictive analytics often relies on human interaction to help curate the data, identify trends, and test assumptions. So though it can also use, I don't know. It goes on. Anyways, so we've been using analytics you know for over a decade i, I think you know Lu oh, yeah. lunau coming over from the cardinals and the astros being one of the first teams to really use uh predictive analytics to scout and to and to you know just kind of you know help their scouting department and now we've seen just it, it explode you know it's data everywhere we're we're tracking you know pretty much every single pitch uh, every single play that's out there. And we're using that, I would say that organizations would say, to the best of their ability to better your team, whether that is, you know, in drafting uh, a certain guy, trading for certain guys. Every team thinks they have the algorithm to identify, uh, you know, players and, and, and trends that are going to help their organization. Um, we know that because we've talked to people that are in front offices and, you know, they, I don't want to give the team away, but I remember during uh, one free agent year, there was a team that paid a player much more than I, I think most teams were willing to because their predictive analytics said, this is the best player available in the free agent draft. Collectively, the baseball world did not agree to that. Um, but they, their own software did. I think they were wrong about it. How about that, Jake? How about I'm not going to name the player because that's not fair. Um, so that's been around forever. I mean, I remember in 2014, uh, the Twins had already had an analytics department. It was one guy by the name of Jack Gowen. So shout out, Jack. Good and guy? Great guy. Nice. But like, what a tough position to put yeah. somebody in. One guy speaking a completely different language than, uh, you know, dumb baseball players. I don't want to say dumb baseball players. There are some smart yeah. baseball players, but you know what I'm saying. I'm exaggerating there. Uh, trying to trying to come in 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 the clubhouse, and he only did it with a few players. He did it with me because he knew I was like I could joke around with him about it, and trying to explain, hey, like you got to do this better, uh, and then your numbers will increase. And I was like, what are you talking about, man? Uh, flash forward to today, I mean, analytical departments can range anywhere from, what, like 30 to 40 people, maybe even more. You had Eno Saris on Wake and Jake, and he was saying, you know, the analytical departments, yeah, there's there's certain people who are, their job title has analysts in it, but there might be other people consulting that you don't even know how many or how deep these departments run. And you can have your opinion on it. Like, do you think it's bettered the game? I think it probably has, to be honest with you. I mean, we're learning a lot of different things. The more data you have, the more informed decisions you can make. So I, I'm kind of on the fence of it's probably better for the game. I think a lot of people are like, that's why I say managers don't matter anymore because we have a lot of these decisions already made up because we have all the information and all the data already sorted and and, you know, when I played for the Phillies, it was a book that they opened up and uh, each situation was kind of had its own page. And there was if your name had a green by it, that meant you were good for that situation. Mm. It's like SeatGeek. Yeah. 
If it was red, you were not like. If I would look at the same, like, all right, shoot. Um, seventh inning. Who's the pitcher? Okay, go to that page. Uh, runners in scoring position, or the other page would be bases empty. And I look at my thing. Oh, two reds. All right, better go get some more seeds and sit down on the bench. Like that's how that's how the game has gotten. Uh, for most teams, I think you know there are still still a few managers who might go against those decisions. Surely when I played the A's, Bob Melvin did not go against those decisions. He said he kept telling me he wanted to, but if he did, the front office would right. be calling him. He said it to me on multiple occasions. I wanted to start you today, but front office Bob, you're kind of making it worse, Pop. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I wish um, I was out there. Your Yankees are uh, you know, a very analytically driven team, although people think they just spend money to – in championships they have one of the bigger analytical departments in baseball so like this is i've kind of kind of gone loose here but this is one this thing analytics has been around for a long time people know that essentially Uh, what i'm talking about here and ai and um you know autonomous learning is different and i think there i just the reason I brought it up, I, I feel like I want to put my foot down mm. and just talk about like almost like the ethical part of it and like what should be allowed in baseball and what shouldn't be allowed in baseball. Because I do believe that we can't just continue down this path. I believe there are there there's pathways where it turns into cheating. Right. Essentially. And I've mentioned this a little bit already. I already don't think that you should have people who are not uniform personnel, coaches or players, analyzing video for people tipping pitches. I just don't think it's right. Like, you're not on the fucking team, dude. But how do you stop that, Jake? Even that, humans that aren't on the team doing it, that's their only job, like, you can't stop that. Right. Like, some guy, you know, he has a computer at his house, and all he's got to do is just scour the video And then give you the results. Like that's already happening in baseball. I don't like it because I think that that's a that's a part of the game that's to me sacred. I I really look at that. Like if you can pick a pitcher apart and 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 get a get a tell, like that's that's a sacred part of the game. It's a real game within the game type thing, and we need to keep it that way. Add into it AI, where you're just inputting these uh, videos into a program and this. you know, machine learning is the more videos you put into it, the better it can do. All of a sudden, it doesn't. You don't even need a person. Like the videos automatically are being. I mean, you, you you already have the video, so the videos automatically go into this thing, and then bam, out comes a sheet. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. That to me is not good for baseball. Okay. So I don't. I don't want to go necessarily down that path, and I think that. That's like the first thing that came to my mind. And I I, I hit a few guys up in the front office um, that will remain nameless. And they said that's not happening yet. They also said in a couple years, that's a layup. Pitch tipping, pitch sequencing, which is another thing that we kind of talked about. Like what was the Astros 2017? A camera pointed there knowing what pitch was coming in real time. A lot of people believe that with the AI, you know, self-learning, I don't even know, what what do you call them? Programs? Sure. We're going to be able to basically, you know, with enough data, we're going to be able to know the sequence of pitches that's coming. Not just 2-1 change up. This guy throws 60%. It's, what batter, uh, the sequencing of pitches before, um, you know, what part of the year, uh, how many pitch, ca- how many pitches is he yet? We're going to have all this data that's going to be in real time telling us at a pretty high success rate what pitch is going to come. And then how easy is it to relay pitches to the hitter? Right. All you got to do is go, or like, there's so many things you can do. I can't have that in the game, Jake. So how do you combat that is my question. It's a big one, and you're asking the right guy. That's the good news. Yeah, I think so. You're at the right point because, I, Trev, I will be honest. At one point, I got a little dizzy. 
like just a little bit dizzy because I, I guess for me, it's, I, I always like finding out the things I can hang my hat on it at, at, especially for a topic like this. Like, what can I walk away and be like, Ooh, I don't like that going that way. Oh, I'm interested in that going that way. And then there's going to be filler that I have no idea about because I'm, I should not be the expert on AI and baseball, but I'm working my way up. Um, I guess for me, and I, I want to do, again, as we're just chewing this off a little bit, because you're saying AI and analytics and it's trying to find that line in the sand. I, I guess for me, isn't, it's one of those things, uh, I'm trying to think of the, where like, oh, you, you say North America can be an island and a continent. Like, isn't AI basically turning into analytics? Because like you're saying, it's running and conducting all these tests. Like, I guess I'm trying to compare it. Uh, like in, I think in the world of medicine, but there's no like, people involved in AI right. necessarily. Like it's it's autonomous. It can learn and can it can take the role of ten people essentially. Okay. So what can we focus on the good first? Like what what can be the pros here? What what can be the pluses? Like I, I and I and I want to talk about either on a team level, like my my team can get an advantage because they figured out this. And now, um, example, I, the one that always gets me that, again, I think it's analytics, not AI, but I think there's a way you could punch it in and figure it out. Paul Seawald for years was, was told, you don't throw hard, keep that fastball low, kid. Uh, and then they crunched some numbers on it, and it was actually like, well, actually, his fastball plays high in the zone, and he's become like a lights-out closer. Um, so... What does that mean? Does that mean I can put in to a computer system uh, Paul Seawald's build, throwing angle, fastball? But it, that sounds like analytics to me. So I guess I don't know. They're, I mean, they're, they're joined. They are joined. Okay. I think the difference is, like I said, it's autonomous and can learn and, and basically create whatever you want it to create. You can input. Like, there's, a, there's an article... Um, you know, like a study done by, you know, uh, like a college thesis this kid did. And he used the Google Bard and uh, chat uh, GPT and basically put, input a bunch of statistics and prompts into these AI learning uh, machines. I'm still sure. searching here, people. We're just talking. And, uh, you know, it said, hey, come up with your own statistic to rank these players and to predict the, like their season. And like the more prompts you put in, the better results you're going to get. Um, so in a sense, yeah, you already have to have the data. Like data analytics is part of AI. You're prompting it, doing all these things, but it can come up with completely different things than we have already. I mean, this is a fucking, like the human brain. Oh, here we go. Beautiful thing. Here we, here we go. go. The human brain is a beautiful thing, right? We've, we haven't unlocked what the brain can do. We only use how much of it, BBD? I'm sure you have that knowledge off the top of your head. 10%? Um, th that, that is a, that is an, a, an adage, yeah. It, 10, and, 20%, whatever the fuck it is. Inaccurate, but that is a, what people a, a say. A computer's a thousand times that. It, if it you can Google... Things, it can do things that... Okay, what does it say? If you Google how much of the brain is used, <laughs> it, it pops up... The notion that a person only uses 10% of the brain is a myth. <laughs> okay. How do they know? That's the thing. How do we 5%. know? I don't know. It could be 5%, people. Could be less. Haven't you ever seen that Bradley Cooper movie where he takes that pill? <laughs> I didn't see that. Was that good? That's a weird that's It's where the phrase kind of came bro. from. I was still it, close to my college Adderall days that I, did, I didn't want to kind of like It's kind of like the movie Blow. You just want to watch the beginning of it. Don't watch the end because it gets sad. <laughs> Charge. Uh, yeah, okay. just watch the beginning. Sure. Um. Okay. I don't even know where we're at. Okay. So good. You wanted the good things. Yeah. Give me the good. Give me. Give me the. Bring me into AI in a positive way. I think that um, we're going to see, like AI personal trainers in sports in general. I think that, you know, a lot of guys for a long time were really weary of wearing like wearable tech and like, 
you know, sharing that data with a team. And I think they kind of still are because teams can kind of use it against you. Right. You want to keep that information to yourself. And maybe you do it with your agent or yeah. or somebody. Um, but essentially now, if you're tracking all your biometrics, like there can be uh, and your movements and your biomechanics and you have your own like kind of little AI trainer, it can tell you, you know, when to rest, what to do, is your range of motion there, uh, you know, what's your sleep pattern? We we all see it. We, we, we did, you know, there's watches out there that do that. I mean, that's essentially AI helping you better your life. I think that's going to get even more integrated into our training programs. Training programs are going to be super, super detailed and player specific, which I think is going to be end up being good for the game. Jake, you talk about the rash of player injuries and, and pitcher injuries. Like, I don't know if AI is going to help with that because essentially – Everyone's just trying to throw as hard as they fucking can, and that's bad for your elbow. Um, and I think the computer would be like, don't do that. But yeah, guys are like, never going to stop doing right? it. Right? Like, isn't the computer going to kick that. back and be like, hey, you know, every, every pitcher should be built like David Wells. He, he threw 250 innings a Maybe year. Maybe it would, Jake. You know? I don't know. Okay. We're going off a little bit. I asked somebody okay. in the know. I said, here. It's all off record. Is off record mean I can't say what he said or I just can't <laughs> say his name? Um, I definitely can't say their name. I would not say their name. And I you think you can to... discuss the topics, but like not but verbatim. Be like, I'm going to paraphrase. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Okay. Um, I just asked him a bunch of questions. And basically, like, how much is AI influencing the game of baseball right now? And his general response was, it's not influencing the game in a meaningful way. Okay. He said in a few years, he thinks it really will be uh, heading scouting departments. Uh, and he's, I think he was more alluding towards, like, advanced scouts. Like, for, you know, for a team, uh, advanced scouts will go and scout and, and set up packets for you on teams that you're going to play in the near future. You know, a week from now, they'll go in an advanced scout, and then they put together all the information for you, and you have your team meetings before you play that series. He thinks those are going to be AI-generated you know, rather quickly, uh, and he included you know, sequencing and pitch tipping. I pushed back on him a little bit on that, and I said, There's, that's, that's got to already be happening. It's too easy. Right. For teams that not just put the video into a program and say, tell me what the pitcher's doing different on all these pitches. And the, the program's like, oh, that's easy, bam. Like, I think that's already happening. I have no proof of that. Okay. Um, I've been around, I'll say this, I mean, I've been around like in the in the dungeons uh, with the twins, and I've never seen them doing that. But again, this could be just somebody at home with the right. computer doing it. So, like, that's going to happen. Um, he also mentioned using some of these uh, prompt uh, machines like Chat uh, GPT, and they're using it to code and, and create different algorithms and, and, and stuff like that. That's already happening. That's only going to get uh, more in the future. Uh, so, like, I think the, the main point of all this is I just don't believe I, I want to use it to make baseball better. Right. You can do scouting, uh, you know, uh, player development. You can do, um, you know, health wise, you know, biomechanics. Like I don't love the idea of like a computer program telling you like, or like creating new pitches on its own, which probably it will Jake. Like it'll probably create pitches for us. Okay. See like, hey, man, I all was... you got to do is just, you know, Here's the here's the pressure. Here's where the seams need to be. Here's the arm angle. Go get it. Like right now, the only way we're doing that is is you know slow mo cameras, right? And then getting the data and then trying it again, which is already like faster than we've ever been able to pitch design. But having AI create pitches for us is like kind of crazy to me. I was wondering when sad hitter Trev was going to come out because everything you were saying before was kind of beneficial for the hitters. We're talking about. Uh, tipping pitches and sequences and things like that, which again, I know that starts to come up on the edge of cheating or not, and that's Live more so your problem there. Um, I mean, I just kind of I laughed in my head a little <laughs> bit thinking about 
you know, we, we've done a lot of talks about how pitchers on their throw day, they can find a new pitch or they can try a new pitch. And that's one of the biggest advancing advancements in pitching that if you hear David Cohn on a national broadcast, he's a, uh, he's a pitcher's pitcher. He was always tinkering. He was always throwing new pitches, um, you know, making it up start to start that he was like that, that technology is my, was my absolute dream that I think, A, it's funny that they could do that, but Trev, this, <laughs> this is a little bit of sicko uh, kind of going like Game of thrones on it. Like, couldn't I, if I could replicate with AI a pitcher's arm length, how hard they can throw a ball, couldn't I basically have a robot arm practicing the pitches for me so the next time I come to my bullpen session, it's like, hey, Robot arm banged out 10,000 curveballs from your arm length and your slot, and this is what you need to be doing. That's a little freaky deaky. It wouldn't be like a robot arm actually throwing the pitches. It would just be a simulation of the pitches in a program. But yes. Yes, Jake. And you know what? I know the comment section is going to be full of people going, you guys don't even know what you're talking about. You're right. We don't. And For you know what? Sure. You commenting that, you don't know either. Yeah, You don't know the capabilities of AI and what's going to happen in baseball. I just think that there needs to be, you know, as we're at the forefront of this, essentially, there needs to be some clear guidelines. And, like, if you're not proactive about something like this, you're fucked. Yeah. Like, I'm not waiting for Major League Baseball 15 years down the road to say, you know what? We can't do... Uh, we can't have uh, that computer, uh, you know, getting guys in their movements as a pitcher. I, I just don't want that to happen. So I'm putting it out there right now. If anybody in Major League Baseball is listening, like let's let's make sure that isn't happening in the game. We need to make sure this is still a human-driven game. And I get we're using some of these tools to better enhance the humans in the game, but we can't take it to the point where we're just like there still needs to be the human element. And like I, we talk about with umpires, who cares about them? <laughs> really? Love some of the umpires. I don't mean that in a negative way personally, right. but I'm just saying like it's about the play on the field. We can't have it impacting it that much where we get into that area of where it's it's cheating. Yeah, I mean umpires that's just it's calling the game properly that we've we've seen in the minor leagues if you Again, there's there's still some crazy calls that dictate games that, you know, the 3-2 pitch that's that's outside that guts called strike three, that literally would have been a runner on base or maybe a runner scoring if it was bases loaded. That, like, instead it turns into an out and the inning's over. Like, that's, again, that's not, that's using AI in the way that we already know and makes sense and is good for the game. Um, like, and... I think when everyone first saw those minor league replays where they just touch the helmet, it goes up, boom. Like, that's perfect. Cause in. The, I'm in on that. The other fear for me, um, you know, NBA and a lot of basketball games at the end, because they go to replay so much, it can be a bad watch. Uh, and at the end of the day, we are kind of making content here. And I think with the speed of that and how that goes, that's easy. I, I guess for me where I... And again, it's it's AI analytics a little bit that I think we've already seen the good teams take advantage. I think it's always been at the minor league and scouting level. And I think a lot of that has kicked into gear with some of the stuff that's problematic between, you know, where we've been talking a lot about spin rate and how hard you can throw and all of that, where we've measured some of that. I think there can be some really cool stuff, again, in that the Paul Seawald example of, hey, you know, find this pitch or like we can... You know, a guy that throws 91 but with good spin rate high in the zone, like we might be able to tap into something there. I think there's something cool there. Um, I guess for me and the the human element, I still think, A, that'll never be gone because these, the, these damn computers, they, they can do whatever they want. End of the day, a human's got to process it, and then a mm-hmm. human's got to go play ball. So, like, I, I, I think we're going to be covered there, and you're good. Uh, for me, it just feels like this is going to, 
there's going to be some genius that figures something out that we're talking about in five years that they knew how to use AI the right way. It gave them a yes. huge advantage yes. in the minor leagues and baseball, and we're going to have to diagnose that, and I'll, I'll be all ears at the time. I guess for me, when we're talking about player health, which is currently a huge issue, and I, I'm sure they've been messing with AI, and we're talking when you're talking about training programs to keep guys healthy – I don't know, man. Like, what don't you know? What do you mean? I think there's stuff in the injury realm that we could crunch every number ever and we could let AI crunch more and more numbers. Go tell Trevor's story that AI is going to figure out how to keep him healthy. Because I oh, there I, are certain there are certain injuries that aren't preventable that are just part of the game and 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 but, like that and also what you're talking about to really get into injury prevention you got to ha- give yourself up uh, to being analyzed on, on a basically a consistent basis like you just have to be wearing wearable tech you have to go um, you know in front of these cameras and and do your range of motions every single day I mean that's the only way to really really tap into this kind of injury prevention side of it. You just have to feed the data, feed the data, feed the data. If you're only doing it as a baseline at the beginning of the year and then an exit program at the end of the year, that's not going to tell you anything. That's why a lot of teams are trying to do it during the year. There's just player pushback on it. At least there was. I mean, I don't know. I think as we get further and further down the line, guys in the minor leagues are just used to it. Like there's this, I read this article about that. It was talking about the Dodgers. Uh, I actually have that up. That was one. Um... Yeah, we do want to tell the people, as we've told you a few times we're not experts. We do have a couple articles that we tapped into. There's one, uh, Baseball America's chat with GPT. That was that was an interesting thing. But uh, <laughs> that was the, interesting too. the Forbes article, uh, a little more in-depth on on the actual topic. There was one article uh, talking about a uh, it was a Dodgers like uh, executive and he was talking about uh, they had basically zero percent buy in at the major league level for like biomechanic <laughs> tracking yeah. and ninety five percent buy in at the minor level minor league level with it because in the minor leagues you're just like oh, okay sir yeah. yes sir I'll do whatever if you that want helps. me to do I'm, yeah and the big leaguers like nah bro like I'm good you know. You really have to buy into it and do it all the time. And guys are really, I think guys have been told by the PA, by their agent to keep that information close to the vest. Chest. 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 I think both can be, can be used there. Because, you know, there can be things used against you. If, you know, something slight is, you know, showing up, you don't want that to be used against you in contract negotiations and stuff like that. So I think that's, I don't know how far we'll get in that, but again, I think player participation will rise because guys are used to it. That's why when you ever see them testing things out in the minor leagues, like eventually it's just going to be fully acceptable at the major league level because guys are used to it. It's true, and that's I, I guess again, I, I will be open to what that data can bring me, but it it still feels like we're pulling in opposite directions, and and this ties back to the pitching thing. That hey, if if you want to be a good pitcher, throw this pitch and throw it hard. That I don't think that like that part is not worried about health, and then the health part is going to say, "Well, you need to rest and do this, this, and this." And I don't know. I I think the other thing it's gonna, it would tell you is throw less velo. So on the pitching side, I I feel like AI is going to be pulling in different directions. That I don't know if that'll help. And then I don't know, man. Like I again, I hate to keep throwing guys with injury track records out there, but I do think, I don't want to say there's an injury gene, but I I think, you know, Jeff Passan, who wrote the the arm book and, you know, is on the forefront of this, the only thing that's predictive for future pitching pitching injuries is past pitching injuries. There's a direct correlation. If you have arm injuries, you're going to have more arm injuries. Like, that's just, that's like the only thing that's been confirmed. Um, so that goes back to the sick discussion of all the kids getting hurt. And I, I know I'm getting away from AI a little bit. But if all those kids are getting hurt, again, where we talked about it being a 10-year problem, that just means we're going to have more people getting hurt. So that shows how bad that is. But for AI, I like 
you know, what is AI going to measure Wade Boggs and what he was doing to play every day for for 12 years? Because it, it was drinking 30... Bre- like, I just... I think we're trying to do... And maybe this is the dumb human in me. I think we're okay, giving... Let's go. I think we're giving AI unsolvable tasks. Because I think if anyone stood next to Byron Buxton and Trevor Story, they'd say, man, that guy's in crazy shape and he takes care of his body. Trevor Story, before he came on the show, I, I, I'll never forget and I've told on here... He sent over his stats like it was a combine. They were like, yeah, Trevor Story is a fan of what you guys do. Uh, these are some things he likes, and he's he's really proud of how in shape he is. Yeah, he was a, he was a baseball player. Um, he's an athlete. And I think that's like the comical joke right now around baseball is like, hey, if you want to stay healthy, um, you need, almost need to be less in shape, which don't get me wrong. I understand how that's not a perfect solution. Um that I don't well, know, man. No, it's it's not. It's it's a, <laughs> as as dumb as you make that sound, right. Jake. Right. I don't think it's that far off. Like, okay, uh, if you're if you're doing something at seventy percent of your body's capability, right? Like, you're probably in the green zone for injuries. Like, you're not gonna get hurt. It's when you get it close to hundred percent of your body's capabilities that that's when the stress gets put on your ligaments and your muscles and. And injuries can happen. That's what we're, that's what's happening with pitchers. If these guys went out and threw eighty percent, they're not going to get hurt, dude. It's the max effort that gets them hurt. Right, it's Byron Buxton. It's Byron. I know. I'm, I'm. I'm. We're not talking about. That's why they do it. Yeah. At max effort because they're trying to get results. I'm just saying. I mean, there's something to that. Like Byron Buxton runs so dang fast. You know, some of his injuries haven't been, you know, they've been fluke, but he runs so dang fast that, like, clearly there's more stress put on his body than if you were to, no offense, Jake, if you were to kind of just run okay. around the ballpark a little bit. Interested. Right? Yes. I, I guess. And it, we're going down a different path now. Again, but. man. Well, you know what? Let me, before I get to my final statement, I, uh, Bloomberg's The Deal, hosted by Rod, who he's got opinions on this, and I want him. Uh, I might have Was to... he a hurt guy, or did he play every day? A-Rod played a lot. Played a lot. He had the one, like, hip surgery that he got yeah. in his later oh, 30s. Bad hip guy. But... The Deal, co-hosted by Alex Rodriguez. Rod! Him and Bloomberg reporter Jason Kelly speak to big-time athletes and entertainers. Maria Sharapova, Michael Strahan, Derek Jita. The deal takes you behind the scenes in the world of sports, media, and entertainment. We got to link up with Rod. Joe's has the connection. You're a couple third base studs. Talk some hitting. We talked about. I think him and I would probably get along more than I give him credit for. The Bloomberg You'd have more in common from Bloomberg yeah, Podcasts do. and Bloomberg Originals. You can listen to the deal on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Click the link in the description. You listen to podcasts. Go check them out. I guess, and again, let's wrap up the AI. Maybe, maybe this is cop out Jake shit, and that's kind of a chunk of my life. Because uh, sometimes the easy way out to save yourself ten percent of the stress that's that's worked well for me. Like, it feels like a little bit like we're spinning in circles. Like all the pitching shape stuff makes sense to me. I've talked about that a few times. Uh, a lot of the hitting stuff. Whether it's, you know, if we can pick up on sequencing or like you always said, if, you know, like I think there's a legal good side to it that it's like, hey, you know, if if they go fastball, fastball, slider, you know, 70% of the time it's a changeup and that's coming. Like, I, I think that's awesome. That's, those are the original almost analytics and guys used to just have more feel for it that I think some of that stuff brings the game to a good place and I... Like I used with my Paul Seawald example, I think we can find more minor league guys that have different abilities that we can tap into that are guys that maybe got a, we would have moved on from. That it's like, no, there's, there's something there. I guess for me, it's how much are we spinning our wheels about trying to improve the margins, which could be hurting the margins in general. Like, again, in the pitching example, 
We've got all of these guys that are excelling at pitching because they're throwing harder and they've tapped in everything and blah, blah, blah. But now they're getting hurt. And so they're gone for a year and a half, two seasons, that my Yankees have gotten a lot better this, this season. And I don't know how much of it is analytics or stuff on the margins or how much it is that Juan Soto is on the team, who's a generational baseball player. Alex Verdugo, who's a, a great bat-to-ball contact bat. Giancarlo Stanton and Anthony Rizzo are healthy, and those guys are like generational ball players in their own way. That, you know, you, we mentioned the Dodgers, and, and we're talking about their, their health. And again, I, I don't want this to be unfair just because they were mentioned in the article. But, you know, right now on their pitching IL, it's what? Walker Bueller, Clayton Kershaw, um, a couple other guys that, I don't know, for, for everything, for how far deep we dive into this, it, it turns into still like who's good at baseball, <laughs> uh, who's yes. healthy and on the field, and who's good at baseball. And I'd, But it gets those guys on your team. I think that's what. That's what a yeah. lot of analytical departments will do. Like and and three hundred mil also got Yamamoto on the team and Juan Soto. One of the Yankees were one of the only teams that were going to trade for him because he's going to have five hundred mil coming up, and they're one of the two three teams that'll pay that. Yeah, it's but it's 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 drafting Will Smith and yeah. and it's like you know you have to you have to be able to do that and, and I think a lot of times I'm they're in. using yeah that's where they're using data analytics. And possibly AI in the future to you know find the the quote unquote diamonds in the rough. These guys are doing something that you know uh, we need. And this goes back. I mean, that goes back to Moneyball and what they and what the A's were doing and the the players they were trying to acquire. It's a mixture, of course. If you get guys who are proven superstars, your team is going to get better. And one thing I'll say this that you know the analytics can't capture and and. And you hear baseball players talk about it all the time, and, and we get shot down because we're just dumb jocks. It's the vibes, bro. Yeah. Like the vibes within a team, you can't measure. And that does mean something. It really, really does. So that's one part of the human element that'll never go anywhere. I think my last talk on this is man, again, we're just spitballing here, people. We're I'm just very curious in how this is going to shape the baseball landscape. So I wanted to get on here and talk about it. Leave a comment. Let us know what your feelings are. Um, my foot is down. No video analysis by people who are not uniform personnel. That includes AI and the robots. You're not allowed to do it either. I don't like that. I don't like them learning what pitch is going to be thrown or finding a pitcher's tip because they just input video into a program. I don't think that's fair, and it should not be part of the game of baseball. End scene. Yeah, I, I think I'm with you there. I'm, I'm excited to see what what this episode sounds like in five years when they're when when they have it's another reason I wanted to do this episode. When like, they we're have gonna look back on this, and be like what? Oh yeah, we will laugh at this uh, one day, and that's that's kind of the beauty of it. Um, yeah, man, I. I don't know. Like I, it, if you look at the good teams around baseball, if you look at the good teams around baseball, I can't argue with any minor leagues stuff because that is the lifeblood of like any good team. Uh, but it's also bringing in the good players, whether that's via trade or whether that's via free agency. That the Texas Rangers, like, hey, White Langford. Uh, Evan Carter, Josh Young, guys that, you know, Leody Tavares gets overlooked, who's been a really nice young center fielder. Uh, they traded for Nate Lowe, and then they paid big boy money for Simeon Seager. Um, you know, a whole pitching staff and a half. Avaldi, Gray, Heaney, um, DeGrom, Molly Scherzer, and now Lorenz and two, that I... I don't know. I I think I think there'll be small cool wins from AI that I'll be excited about. Like there'll be a stat out there that's that we can't punch in mentally that it's like, "Hey, if a team after seeing a starting pitcher that throws 98 the next day if they see a softballing pitcher from the opposite side that throws 87, 
that team wins 80% of the time. Like, I think there can be some cool bubble pop-up shit like this, but end of the day, like, <laughs> good players still win in sports. Good players, good coaching. And I, I was laughing, even hitting is the hardest thing to do in sports. And, I, you know, I know some of the golfers will, will get jazzed up about that. Um, but in the home run derby, hey, you're getting 70 over the dick, and we, you see some of the sport's biggest stars that put up, you know, four homer rounds. So actually performing in this game or whatever analytic I could give to the pitcher on the 3-2 pitch, hey, man, if you throw that changeup and that grip and you bang it perfectly, you're going to get this guy up. Well, if he feels a little tick in his heart rate and he just bounces it in the dirt, what does it matter? So I don't know. I, I realize I'm probably going to look back on something like that in five years and laugh at myself because I missed this, 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 and this. But end of the day, sports are very much still played with the guys on the field. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Speaking of guys on the field, Trev, uh, we do have one of the more excitement, exciting call-ups uh, in recent history. Wasn't ready to make the team out of camp. No. Uh, oh, ugh, he was but not ready, Jake. Jackson Holiday, super prospect, 20 years old, number seven, wearing Pops' his number, which is pretty cool, uh, gets called up from the Orioles. Again, I, I was kind of laughing. The Orioles are off to a 6-4 and four start. They've actually been pitching and, and not going nuts with the stick so far. Um, it'll be interesting. Colton Kowser, one of the top prospects that you don't hear about because he was like eighth on their, on their top prospect list. I think he had a monster game the other day. Um, Jackson Holiday, it looks like he's going to be slated to plug and play at second base. I know Jordan Westberg has been moving around for them. Um, and again, I, I guess <laughs> me, me combating the computers a little bit. I, I bet the computers say this Jackson Holiday call up can be a pretty good thing if they're looking at his minor league stats. I, I'm just going through the numbers right here. Um, Orioles are 19th in OPS. Um, Jackson Holiday right now um, is one dotting it at the AAA level. We know about the Norfolk Tide and uh, the yeah. things that they've been doing as a team. Uh, but Jackson has a 949 career OPS in three minor league seasons. He's 20 years old right now. He's 6.6 years younger than the average age in the International League. Like this guy's a, a, a superstar, dude. Uh, so, yes, he's going to come up and he's going to help. I'm assuming, what, he's going to play second base? That's where they have him listed, and it's, you know, Gunners kind of had short that I, Orioles fans, I guess, let us let us know. Does Would something have to go down to realign that infield? Because uh, I, I don't know. Like, are spots up for sale? If Holiday looks nasty at second, is it going to open a conversation? Let, let us know. Gunner play third. Like in- yeah, yeah. I'd imagine it's on the table. I don't know. I'm looking right now and see what they say about all this. Usually uh, MLB trade rumors is pretty good about all this stuff. Yeah. And it feels like okay, all, so the all timing three of, of the those promotion kids can surely, do whatever. Yeah, the timing of this promotion surely isn't coincidental. By calling Holiday up before the end of this week, the O's are still in position to afford him a full year of service time. Okay. Yeah. Checks Despite out. his two-week stint in the minors, Holiday will narrowly surpass that mark if he's in the majors for good. Okay. Oh, we just we just got the Jackson Holiday video too. Yeah, nice cutoff. Um. Yeah, I'm, I. Uh, man, I know they <laughs> they posted a video of Jackson Holiday like playing on the field with his dad, oh. and that was crazy. And Buster only, <laughs> Buster only at. Keeping receipts, Buster only tweeted out in 2013. 2013, it's 2024. He said, Matt Holiday's son, future all-star. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Buster. Do you see somebody reply to that? Like, don't you think it's a little early to say that? Because he was, what, 13 then? And he said. Buster doubled down. <laughs> Buster said, I saw the swing. I'll I'll stand by it. So I think he hasn't come to play second base. <clears throat> uh, that's why, and that was one of the reasons they sent him to AAA. Also, you know, the PPI is the, how do you, what's that? Excuse Prospect me? promotion incentive. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's to, you know, they put that in the CBA so people, organizations wouldn't just 
hold the guys down until they couldn't accrue a full year of service time, thereby getting an extra year of service of controllable time with a player. Um, they put this in. Now, if you finish, you know, top three in rookie of the year, you can get uh, not only the player is going to get a full year of service time if he does that, but the teams can also be incentivized by draft picks. So, you know, for them, if they waited a week, uh, one more week to do this, they would have had an, another year of control on him, but they also wouldn't be eligible to receive any of the PPI incentives. So they see this guy going off. They're like, fuck, we have to call him eventually. Even if they waited another week and got that full year of control, if he goes out and bangs in right. his top three in rookie of the year, he accrues a full year anyway. of a service time anyway. So like maybe they were hoping he like struggled at the AAA level a little bit and then they could kind of, I don't know. Well, does this the, leave the them fact like... that he went off and is crushing it? They're like, all right, this guy's he's gonna be a guy. Let's just get him up here. Is there something we're kind of missing there? Like, are they leaving themselves a little bit of wiggle that, like, if he does struggle, that they could send him? It down sounds. For it sounds like week? basically oh, yeah. any send down yeah. would then get them the year. Exactly. But... If he struggles at all and he's not, gonna, they know he's not gonna be in contention for you know a top three rookie of the year voting. Yeah, they send him down for a week or so, and they'll have a full another full year of control on him. But again, I, I I'm assuming we're gonna see a slew of extensions uh, with this Orioles team. Like at I'm assuming point, that's gonna, gonna happen. New ownership. Them. Yeah, they have just too many guys uh that they already believe in who like people un universally uh believe Gunnar Henderson's going to be like a superstar. Uh Jackson Hall they will see him at the big league level for the first time that'll be nice. Uh but you got to lock these guys up. So what does it even fucking matter? Trev, I I guess this is a super unique situation cuz a these those kind of extensions haven't really been around the game for too long. Like baseball was kind of like a, you got to earn it to uh, to get that contract, but now we've after the Braves' success with extending a few of those young guys early on, I, it's almost become the hopeful model. Do you think there could be any like I don't, I won't say weird vibes, but you know, I I wouldn't be surprised if the Orioles' office probably has low ballish offers out to Gunner, to Holiday, to I don't know, mm. one or two other guys that or, they're or at least under the previous ownership did. That they're they're happen. waiting for someone to kind of cave and take the cheese. And do these guys almost have to bond together and be like, hey, like I don't know, that's so weird because it's your own business, but it's also I don't know. It if you're Gunnar Henderson, I your contract kind of could affect Jackson Holiday, or if one of them signs, yeah, the sure. other won't you, sign. I don't know. These guys could all w walk in. Adley Rushman, Gunnar Henderson, yeah. and Jackson Holiday, probably Grayson Rodriguez, could all walk in uh, to the front office right now and say, give me a seven years, uh, $80 million deal. Like, they could all walk in right now and yeah. say, give me that, and they would give it to them. So, you know, to your point, like, if one of them takes a lowball offer, the other ones are – Kind of screwed. I don't know if that's necessarily the case because the more you put up numbers and and the further you get along arbitration, obviously that all changes. Um, but I'm just assuming, and and it's it's person by person, man. Like, right? If you if you're just like you know what, like my family comes from this. Right. I've worked so hard. If I could just do this and secure my family for life, like a lot of guys are are into that. And I think a lot of guys should be into that. Josh Willingham always said, never pass up like your first fortune. He used to say that all the time. Like if you're getting a deal like this, go take it and you know try to earn it's more on the back end. But like, that's what, I mean, dude, didn't he get a nice the greatest little contract? Joy... What's that? Didn't Willingham get a nice little contract at some point? He, he did pretty well. Okay. The, the the truth is, and I want people are like, hopefully they don't scoff at this. The truth is, the probably the greatest joy a baseball player could have is not a World Series title. It's being able to secure like his family's right life monetarily. Like that's got to be the best feeling. I get it. Like winning, I never played a playoff game. <laughs> it's not my fault, people. Me and Mike Trout are very similar in that regard. Okay. <laughs> Winning World Series, great feeling. Everything's amazing. I love that. I understand that. God, I wish I would have played in the playoffs. I would have been so good. Um, slow heartbeat guy. Yeah. Securing your family's like future. How does that not mean more to you? Like that means more. Like you have to see that, right? 
I I mean, part of me gets that, part of me doesn't. I with, without uh, any any pups yet, but yeah, I I could see that. And uh, Josh Willingham, it looks like he might have got a, a three for twenty one mil deal and at the end there, which that's pretty nice. And fingerprints still on the MLB season. Josh Willingham was traded for Royals prospect Jason Adam, coming coming out nice. of that Rays bullpen. Oh. Um, so how about that? Josh Willingham effect still in the game. Uh, let's see how the kid plays for the Birds. I, you know, Grayson got called up last year and got punched in the mouth a little bit. I don't know. From from everything I've seen about Jackson Holiday and those minor league stats, same amount of walks as strikeouts. He's got steals. He's like one dotted at every level. Um, I wonder if that provides a, a spark a spark for the Birds. Glad to see him in the show. We want more talent in the show. That's kind of what AI's trying to do, too. Look at that. I'm looking to see if we've had any um, Instagram interactions. He does follow me. Okay. Um, the other, we have not talked. Uh, there was another uh, top prospect who got the call. Uh, Eric Getty for Houston. Uh, yep. so, Pitcher? Yeah. So, hey, uh, coming off of the Framber news, um. Let's see what he's got. Top prospect for Houston. And your team probably has a top prospect coming soon. So let us know. Let us know about all of that. And uh, like you mentioned, the the team-friendly kid extensions. Uh, Sedan Rafaela, the young Red Sox outfielder, 8 for 50. Um, so, I mean, again, like you said, snaps for him, dude. This guy's played a couple major league games, and he's got a guaranteed 50 mil coming his way. And if he's a good ball player, it's a massive win for the Red Sox. And our Red Sox, who have been playing a good brand of baseball, uh, the window's starting to become like a little more apparent. They locked up Bayo um, for six years, 55. So, hey, Sox, kid, it, it seems like we got a little plan for him. They have not operated that way whatsoever. You know, they haven't been giving they, – they, they typically don't give out like pre-arbitration extensions. You know, they've gone – they dabbled into um, – you know, the big time free agents, um, you know, they've extended Devers, but that was only after, you know, he's he been one of the best players away. in the game. Yeah. Like, yeah. So they haven't operated like this, but I mean, I think if you look around, uh, I, I always say this and it's been about five years of saying this is like, I think more teams need to just be doing this. You've got to take these chances. Some of them aren't going to work out, dude. Totally get that. But I think you've got to take these chances uh, to put yourself in a position. If we're going to have all these artificial caps um, that you're putting on the game, these soft caps, and you want to stay within you know, some sort of budget, like you got to take these chances um, on some of the young guys. Cost control. Teams love cost control. I love Costco. Yeah, it's been out of my life in the city, but my, my suburb boys will, will rub in a Costco trip um, mm. most weekends in Connecticut. Um Talking baseball crew, it's a funky one. It's a funky one. Would love to hear your comments. Um, you know, maybe ne- maybe next day I up we have to do late night and really let it eat. No simulation Great app. talk. Chick sucks. Always. Great simulation. app or horrible app? We said the word simulation. Great. The boys are bopping. Watch um, slap ball. We'll see. Watch slap ball. We'll see you guys. Friday. Friday. That literally was talking baseball. That's that kind was of what talking I mean. baseball. That's what you came into the show thinking we were going to talk about was baseball. 